Okay, so um, thank you for coming to our uh, kind of twine hang. <laughs> um, first, I'd like to uh, begin by um, acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land we are meeting on today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations. Uh, I pay my respects, or we pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging and extend that respect to any First Nations people in the audience or attending the festival today. Uh, sovereignty was, has not been ceded and this was always, always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Okay, so yeah, thank you so much for coming. Um, my name's Tegan. Um, I'm a writer, zine maker and twine person, enthusiast person. Um, and I'm joined by two wonderful other writers, poets, twine people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, cross genre. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name's Imogen. I'm a, a writer. And you've met Gemma already. She's a poet. Yes. Yeah. Um, and she knows it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we're we're going to be um, talking um, about uh, twine and our experiences uh, using it, and also experiences coming from non uh, programming and, and and tech backgrounds. Um, so just a, if none of you are familiar, if, if some of you aren't familiar with Twine, um, it's basically just a free online tool that you can use to build um, interactive uh, stories. Uh, that's it's, yeah, my first introduction. I think a lot of people's first introductions is to kind of like branching narrative um, things like choose your own adventure. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure book, um, but obviously digital. <laughs> um, and, but yeah, um, the great thing about Twine is that it's pretty accessible for lots of different people from lots of different creative backgrounds, including us, um, who don't really have a lot of experience with coding or anything like that, So, um, but can still make really cool things. Um, so yeah, this is going to be pretty informal. We're going to get up and show a piece and then chat about it. Um, I'm going to, yeah, try my best, the three of us, but I'm going to try my best to leave some time for questions at the end. Um, if we do run out, please feel free to uh, message any of us on the internet. Um, our Twitter thingies are in, our, in the program, so yeah, please reach out if you want to learn more or just, you know, chat about how cool Twine is. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Um, I am going to go first. Is the, yeah, I'm going to go first. Okay. So uh, you're sick of hearing me talk in my voice, but that's fine. Um, so I am going to read... Oh, no. I'm going to read uh, a very short piece. M my, tw my twines tend to be quite boring unless um, <laughs> you read them out because it's all just text stuff. So I'm just going to read it out very quickly um, for you and then we're going to have a bit of a chat. Okay. So this is called uh, Steel Foam. Um, so, uh, yeah. I have this stone. It is not a nice feeling. It doesn't purple or glitter in my palm if I spit it out. I want to throw up, but I'm worried about losing the weight. I've had this rock collection ever since I was a kid. It makes me sweat as I walk towards the battlefield. This is not a football oval. This is a battlefield. It's late summer. The sun hasn't set yet, but the lights still loom, held up like the light towers behind my old high school. The football oval is pretty empty when I ride past on crisp mornings, but it's full now full of upright bodies, evening pink and orange splashed across their steel. I spit and the stones give birth to more stones. My stomach sinks past the waistband of my pants. I start to walk along the barrier towards the grass by the sports canteen. On my way, I trip over a feeling and hit the dirt, palms first. I look down, wipe the tear from my hot cheek. I look up and see a strong, steady night, of, and of course she's watching. I think her name is Shay. Her shadow is held together with foam and yellow gaffer tape. She is holding her gloves in her helmet, along with a smile and a mouth full of blood. She sh swallows and waves. I try to cast... Oh, sorry. I try to bury my whole head inside my backpack, but she unspikes her sword and starts to walk towards me. I brace myself. Oh, my God. Shay, hi. I love your armour. You look fucking amazing. Oh, um, no, I was just thinking of watching for today. Yeah, I was supposed to do the intro with a friend, but she wasn't able to make it. 
Uh, oh, no, it's okay. You don't have to do that. I wouldn't want to slow you all down. Uh, they, in your battle group, sorry, I really don't, I'm really new to all of this. No, no, it's okay, it'll be fine, I'll be fine, thank you, though. Spit it out. Spit it out. Good luck, I'm sure you'll be great. Um, so this is just a short experiment that I've been doing, um, mostly using cycling links, because I really like them a lot, these guys here. Um, I read once in a forum that someone was having a go at them for being purely cosmetic, so I've kind of just like attached, I've, I've kind of like attached myself to them and they try to defend them a little bit, whereas so I use them a lot in my games because I'm like, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, they're my favourite links to use because um, they're really good at exploring how um, to create a kind of dual space within one piece of text that you can't really do with straight up fiction. Um, and so, yeah, this is just a story that I wrote. It's about um, just a girl who goes to a live action role play group um, with a friend um, and sees a friend that she knows so it's that from school. So it's very simple, but um, yeah, not, it's not autobiographical, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it kind of deals a little bit uh, with uh, my experiences of uh, social anxiety and like, um, yeah, that's. That's what that's about. Um, Tegan. Yes. So Tegan's traditionally a writer. Yes. Straight up words on a page. Yes. But she taught me twine and she taught Gemma twine. Yes. And for that we are her disciples. Yes. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> you're making me embarrassed. Well, you should be. Um, okay. <laughs> when did you learn? Like, when did you learn twine? Because you never asked this of your teachers, but I assume you've been doing it for years. Uh, no, and I've been doing... why did you learn twine? Maybe more. Hey? Why what? did you learn twine? Um, I... Kind of, I'd kind of been messing around with it a little bit um, I don't, uh, before I started using it properly. Um, I don't know how I found it, but I think, yeah, the definitive kind of moment, I went to um, this uh, uh, exhibition that was put on, uh, I think, yeah, by Free Play, I think it might have been. It was at the library. I think it was called Contours. I can't remember. But it was a great um, exhibition of um, really personal games, and I saw a game there um, by Alana Cole called um, Enth Enthemema, I think it's, I don't know how to pronounce it, but. A anathema? Anathema, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, and um, it was kind of the first time that I'd seen twine used instead of like a branching narrative, kind of multiple endings kind of story, it was kind of used, it was still pretty linear, it had like a very, but it was very introspective, very like, um, Used, used cycling links too, so that's probably another one of the reasons why I'm so attached to it, because it was the first thing that I learned. I sat down and taught myself how to use them. Um, and yeah, it just had a really profound effect on me, and I kind of just sat down in the library after that and wrote, yeah, my first ever twine game, and I haven't looked back. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things your twines do a lot is you don't have multiple endings. No. I really appreciate that because I hate <laughs> playing a game and I get frustrated until I've done all the endings and I can't actually enjoy it until I'm like, okay, I've done it all. <laughs> like I've explored every little narrative twist. Are you doing that to help me? Yes. <laughs> or <laughs> that is a better way? To Short answer, <laughs> yes, it's all for Thank you. you. <laughs> no, I, no um, I, yeah, most of my stuff, yeah, it's very... Um, all my stuff is pretty linear, to be honest. Uh, I think part of that is maybe I haven't been able to break away from my, you know, writing training, I guess, or like learning. The way I learnt was how to, yeah, you learn um, writing. You there's certain rhythms you follow yeah. straight yeah. to, yeah, and you it's very linear. Um, the other reason I th I I just find it um, using, I like to use the links and the kind of interactive um, parts of Twine rather than kind of creating multiple parts. I find it personally more interesting for me to think about how I can hit different like story, like different emotional beats, different story um, things um, within something that's still pretty linear, I guess. Um, I guess to give you an example, in the second part, uh, I with the striking like and the and the and the shaking 
like the shaking um, links, it's, it's not going to show up for a bit, but um, yeah, um, just being able to like visually represent like the feeling of like not wanting to have, having something to say and just not being able to, not having it come out of your mouth, not physically being able to have it come out your mouth. Yep. Um, yeah, being able to visually represent that is um, something, yeah, really powerful and cool, particularly if, if, I mean, it's probably not new to a lot of people, but to, coming from fiction, it's a um, really great way to do that. Yeah, yeah when, you, when you learn to write, it's very ruly and strict, and then when you learn twine, you realise that when you're writing a story or something, you don't have to go in a straight line. No. And you can reveal things and you can hide information in a story and you can be yeah. sneaky. It gives you this creative freedom that it's really putting playful. words on the page it's doesn't. It's so fun. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. really given me a... Yeah, it's made me love writing again. For, for a while it was not... It's, yeah, it's not... Look, staring at a blank page is not fun. Um, starting with a twine passage and going, like, figuring out how you're going to the next one is super fun. So that's really helpful. Um, all right, I'm going to... Give Imogen a go now. Thank you. Thank you, Tegan. Yeah. Hey, everyone. My name is Imogen, as I said. Um, I am also a writer and a lover of games, but not really a maker of them until about a year ago when I started twining. Uh, and I didn't think of it as making games. I just thought of it as having better <laughs> control of the wrapper of my story, so I, I could make it look the way I wanted it to look. I could make it, um, I could include stories and I could uh, flex my poor Photoshop skills and stuff like that. So I've made, this is the twine that I want to show you today. Um, it was on my laptop until about a week ago as just nonsense. Actually, the like it was called nonsense. So the point of it is to play and to be silly and until a few hours ago, I didn't actually have a framework to talk about that. And then Duncan uh, gave his chat, and I was like, oh, OK. This is a playful experiment and an act of rebellion against capitalism, apparently. Um, <laughs> so uh, some people don't like games that don't have a point. I think it's fun just to amble through. And it's more of an interactive story than anything. Um, so I'll just zoom through it. And as Tegan said, we'll link these in our Twitters. And if I've gotten to every page, we'd be here all day. Um, so this is a coffee shop. It's maybe set in space or in your mind or something. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> you go in. You have a oh shit. You have a chat to the barista. You order something. It's off an eel. I don't know. Um, you don't want sugar. <laughs> you eat here, um, or you take away in your day. You have just have a, having a bit of banter with the barista. I tend to be a bit like Tegan. I don't have branching narratives because. Uh, they sort of branch and come back, and um, we just keep going forward. Anyway, as you proceed, eventually you get to the point where the barista says, do you want to look at a menu? And on the menu, it is just a group of these little bitty stories and games and pictures and stupid ideas that were too minor to ever be something of themselves. But you know what? They work really well as a weird menu of stories. Um, so it can be stuff like... Uh, <laughs> um, a wonton broth made of, a, this is a set of texts from my dad, who was battling a possum under his house, and then the possum <laughs> died. And it died really, he didn't kill it, he claims. It died of electrocution, but he it was really dramatic and was like, yeah, the possum's dead and I'm alive. Um, <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, and I could only show it to so many people on my phone, so I put in this twine. Um, my sister, who's a very talented illustrator, I said to her, I'm making a twine, and will you make a comic for me about this conversation we once had about what would happen if there was a lightning storm and a man swapped bodies with a seagull? Um, oh, I can't actually see it. <laughs> but she's done a beautiful comic that has uh, that story, if you want to check out what happens. Not what you think, or exactly what you think. I don't know. Um, and some of my these not might not show up, um, oh, no. but some of my favourite things to make is stupid posters <laughs> for fake sitcoms that my friend and I come up with that are pu very punny, um, like JavaScript, which is a story of a developer, a barista, and a screenwriter 
living together in a loft in New York, and then the corporeal spirit of Java, the landmass in Indonesia, comes to them and said, will you go on a quest to return these scripts to their rightful place in the volcano? Anyway, this kind of nonsense has a home on Twine, um, where it doesn't really <laughs> belong anywhere else. Um, and the point of this Twine is just to collect all these ridiculous bits and pieces and put them together in a narrative that went forward, <laughs> so I claim. <laughs> and then eventually when you've had your fill, you ask the bill and you um, sort of pay with kisses maybe, that's what you want. There's a kissing dummy, um, yeah. And that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. Um, yeah. I guess the point of making this, I was like, it doesn't, it can just be silly. There doesn't have to be a point to anything in the whole world. We're just turtling on a rock towards the sun. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is, of all of our three things, this is the most, like, twiny one in that it's very strange and absurd <laughs> in, like, the best way. Um, and I don't know, I feel like, I feel like when I read twi like, I'm much more primed to, like, Accept the weird things that are going to come at me <laughs> if they're in twine, twine f form. Um, yeah, which yeah. Um, I'm really annoyed about the fact that you can't order multiple um, menu items at the same time because well, they're so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you just, you know, get a massive bill at the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, it requires more coding. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, do you feel, when you're writing, do you feel like you're. <laughs> You can lean into that str strangeness, I guess, a little bit more when using Twine as opposed to like, because sh yeah, when you write a short story, well, often people will be like, "What? Well, that this is fun, but like, what's what's the point? What's the point of it?" Tig and I were saying this before that when you write a, sh a story, you open a new document and you can experiment and you can visually lay out your story however you want, but left and right and up and down is a fundamental mm. on a page, whereas Twine you can go off in any direction. Um, and I come, I, I work at a, I'm a copywriter at a design agency and we make digital products and it makes you care about the way things look and having control of your work and being able to put um, whatever you want in and put it in whatever format you want. Like, so Twine is technically a little bit difficult. I suppose you need to learn some coding basics and for non-tech people, it can be scary, but then at the end of the day, you get full control of the way your work looks and the way it feels. Yeah. Which is what this hot mess is meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, but I might let Gemma go and yep, show Jen's us her down. lovely poem as well. Yay. Um, so technically, mine's not... So mine's creative nonfiction. Um, a few, maybe about a year and a half ago, I was asked to review a book called Mirror Sydney by Vanessa Berry. It's, um, it's pretty, it's an amazing document of um, Sydney and the things that it no longer has or used to have or things in it that are dying. And um, decided because, so Tegan had asked me to test a game that she was making and I had no idea that Twine existed at all. And then all of a sudden I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool to um, replicate um, maybe all, all the information in this book in a very Twine, because like Twine um, to me seemed basically like the electronic version of post-it notes mm -hmm. set out on a massive wall. Um, so yeah, so I started with the first four chapters of Barry's book, which are the compass points. So extreme north, west, south, east. And then just for, um, for today, I decided to make Parramatta Road. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and also just to warn you in advance, this does um, mention um, some extreme uh, medical treatments that people may find distressing, but yeah. Um, so which classification? Um, We'll go west and we'll go to places. Lots and lots of places in the extreme west, as you can see. And then there's Parramatta Road, which is this east-west arterial road. Oh, 
It's not showing. It's not showing the the photo. You keep going. I can fix it. Oh, oh no, we've lost internet. No, that's all right. Um, did you want to? Well, I'll fix this. Did you want to talk a bit about like why you decided that um, you wanted to use Twine for this piece in particular? Um, because I thought, um, given that it was a road, I was going to make people click on the um, syllables in Parramatta to see what the road would basically do mm -hmm. or, or what narrative that would give you. So, um, yeah, I also tend to use it in quite linear fashion, even though I know that you don't... Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, thank you. No problem. Um, so that's just a really ugly screenshot of Parramatta Road from Google Maps. So Parramatta Road is an east-west arterial road that spans from the named directions and passes through Sydney CBD, so Wikipedia tells me. Go explore either the east arterial end or the west arterial end. You don't have to read the stuff about the road if you don't want. It's not essential. I'm still biasing some form of linearity even when I'm trying not to. Invaders and settlers are temporal beings. Sorry, but I'm going to make you go on the road. Um, I don't remember my time in Sydney. due to voluntary electroconvulsive therapy not long after. My first and only visit there maybe was in tw between 2012 or 2014. Parramatta Road, an east-west arterial road passing through Sydney CBD. You don't get to control what's deleted or kept thanks to invasion. Land, memories, culture, many things were forced into linearities they didn't fit into. And then you can go back west, or you can go east. Um, Gemma, same yes. question to you. Why did, I mean, you're a writer, why did you not lay this book review out on a page? Why did you choose Twine? Because, um, quite frankly, book reviews are really fucking boring. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, a real problem. <laughs> and, you know, if you... I think there are, there are just so many... We have so many tools at our disposal, especially as poets, um, to excite other readers. And it just seems really silly to just do the standard book review where you go, this book is awesome because dot, 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 the end. Or this book sucks because dot, 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 the end. So I thought, um, also Vanessa Berry has um, a history of chronic illness. She's got chronic fatigue syndrome. So I um, personally connected to the fact that she, she knows Sydney so well because she doesn't do a lot of international travel or ha hasn't because, um, yeah, chronic fatigue syndrome is pretty debilitating, and I think international travel is the last thing on your mind when you, you literally can't move or you walk for half an hour and you can't do anything for a week. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it would be a, creati a creative non-fiction experiment to do a book review that rendered the information in the book um, in a very systematic way, which I felt twine um, was good for, um, and hopefully my, um, the reader of the, of the book review would feel like they had a bit more choice over where they started. Unfortunately, yep. there is still a starting point, but I felt maybe they would... Um, you, you still get to choose where you go. You don't, it's not, there's no, no order in which direction. Yeah, you're not led in any particular direction. And when you've um, shown your twine to people, do you find that because it's so experimental and non-linear that they need a, on almost a warning? Like, how do you enjoy this? Because sometimes with twines, when, when, you're, <laughs> when you're a writer and you want to go off-road and you want it to be weird and, and pointless or very meaningful, whatever you want it to be, 
people seem to need a con like they need a roadmap at the start. Like this isn't meant to be yes meaningful. This is meant to be this, or this is meant to be that. But, uh, both of you, do you find that people need to be trained into how to read your twines or your games because it doesn't make sense, or it's not done, or it's cross genre, or it's I think lots people of things. forget though that. Um, reading text is supposed to make you feel things. That, that's one of the most basic reasons that I'm attracted to, to writing poetry. And I did get my um, ro uh, housemate to road test it. He's, uh, he's doing his PhD in biology, so I thought, oh yeah, he'll be pretty open-minded and he's lived with tech all his life. And um, he said, oh, I'm really sorry, Gemma, but I think it's just a little bit too literary and poetic for me. And I said, no, but that's not the point. It's just, I, I want to know what your experience of it was. I don't, I don't want you to necessarily understand it. I want, yeah, I want you to have had feelings while going through it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think... Yeah, I think that your review actually, I've read a bit of Mirror Sydney and I really like it, but it's very, very dense. Yeah. Like the way that she writes is so dense and so detailed. I think that like um, you taking this and giving it a spatial element, particularly when it's um, about exploring a place through twine has made it more easier for me to digest, I think, and, and access as opposed to like, something that you're supposed to read left to right, like a big dense atlas of yeah. Sydney. It's, it's also funny because, um, so I have, no, I have literally no memory of Sydney. I just know that I've been there. Mm. Um, so all the stuff that I'm learning about Sydney is through, either through Wikipedia or people, um, good mates that have related, um, fact-checked for me, and, um, and the book. Yeah. Um, so I just have to imagine what Sydney is like in my head. Yeah. And I'm hoping that when people read, um, when I eventually finish the, the review, when people read that, they do that in their own heads mm. as well, rather than think that they have to go to the place. Yeah. All right. I think, yeah, we're out of time now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, thank you both for doing this with me. Oh, Everyone's you. very clever. Thanks for asking me. That's it. That's the end. <laughs> <laughs>